Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting Fortnite creative tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over Battle Royale Storm Circles. So I never really deep dived into this tutorial yet. I think this is going to be a great one for you guys to see. Uh, we're gonna build a storm from scratch. I'm gonna explain to you every part of building a storm and why you would choose the options you would choose to make the perfect BR map. So let's not delay, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Before we start, if you like the content I am creating, guys, I really hope you'd slam that like button. It helps me out so much if you like the content you see. All right, guys, let's dive in. Here we go. All right, so guys, the first thing you wanna do before you do anything else is try to center where the exact center of your BR is. That's kind of my center point right there. And you're gonna have to decide on your battle rail map, where is your center point? and you can mark it there if you'd like. That way you can see. If you guys have a bigger battle royale map, so you'll see I'm circling the bigger area. Now guys, depending on how big or small your battle royale map is, is going to be very important when you're planning out your storm phases and your storm circles. You're not gonna wanna make the storm as big if you have a smaller island like I have right here. But if you've completely covered that empty space there with an entire uh, battle royale map, yeah, you're definitely going to be making a bigger map. So what I'm going to do is build this for my small little Battle Royale map. And then I'm going to share with you the settings on Directing Pete's Battle Royale. Uh, so you can mimic those because that's a full size Battle Royale map. But let's create this from scratch using the Advanced Storm Controller. We're going to go ahead and grab that and drop it down. All right, next up, we're going to want to go ahead and grab an advanced storm beacon. You're going to place that bad boy right on top of the advanced storm controller. Go to all options on the advanced storm controller and one by one we'll go through this. Generate storm on game start, yes. Storm phases, you can choose default or custom. Now, if you leave it on default, you're done. You don't actually have to put any of the advanced storm beacons down. And what it will do is it'll give you like a true battle royale experience. That's actually a lie though, because what it does is it gives you the exact storm from the main Battle Royale uh, game from Fortnite. And that map is going to be bigger than anything we can ever create in creative. So it's way too slow. So make sure to set that to custom. You wanna make sure storm phases are set to custom. Phase one radius. Okay, so this is a big one guys. Depending on the size of your map is gonna be dependent on how big you make this radius. If your map fills up basically the entire island or the entire space, you'd go to 200 meters. But in this, what you're gonna do is go to 100 meters because my map is very small. All right, so delay time. Delay time basically is how long do you want it to be until you see the storm pop up? Well, I wanna create a delay time of at least 10 seconds because I want to see the beautiful map that I created before the storm circle ruins it or distracts. So it's nice to have no storm circle up for a minute, just so you can see the entire map that you've created and people can take in all that glory. <laughs> On finished behavior, you're going to actually leave this to stay. That's for different game modes and for battle royale that would not apply. We don't want the storm to like stop after a certain phase, we just want it to stay and continue. All right, so bounds radius. This is an interesting one. This basically says, how far out of bounds are you gonna allow me to push the storm on your small map? And so if you had a bigger map, 200's fine. But once again, you're gonna wanna match it to the one above. So in the smaller maps like I have, this is a smaller battle royale. We're gonna bring it down to 100 meters because Otherwise, the map, the storm's gonna be shooting all over the place. It's gonna be erratic, it's gonna be out of control, and we can't do that. That's basically it, guys, for the advanced storm controller. Now for the advanced storm beacon. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, so we're gonna leave that at phase one because we're, we're on phase one, and we're gonna make many more of these. Uh, end radius, five meters, way too small. We wanna bring that up a lot. So 100 meters is where we're starting at. So we definitely don't want to 
make the next storm circle 100 meters. So we're gonna bring it down from 100 meters to 75 meters. Does that make sense? Because the start radius is going to be 100 meters. The first phase, we want it to shrink to 75. All right, wait time, definitely not five seconds. That's not enough time at all. Usually for the first couple circles, what I do is leave it at a minute. That gives people time to like mat up. If your map is even bigger than this one, you may even wanna do a wait time of two minutes. All right, moving down, we're gonna to go to resize time. So this is the amount of time it will take for the storm to resize. Usually, once again, on these beginning storms, I leave it at one minute because I don't want the storm to feel like it's interfering with collecting mats, um, battling people. I don't want to push them into a small circle too fast for damage. I'm going to up it to 2%. I don't want anybody to feel comfortable sitting in the storm. Uh, one tick storms are just too comfortable. Uh, so a minimum of two tick for your first storm circle, I think, is just a good way to go. All right, so next up, we're gonna go move behavior. Now, move to beacon is going to be very boring, guys. If you leave it on move to beacon, your storm circles are literally going to stay all in one place. They're just gonna move to the exact center of where we're placing these, very boring. So we wanna change that to move randomly. Move randomly, we'll push it around, and that way, each time people play your map, the storm will go a different direction. That's what we want. Move distance. This is so important, guys. Move distance, minimum, and maximum are the most important settings you're going to play around with to make your map perfect. On smaller maps, you're going to want to make these uh, settings smaller. On bigger maps, you can push them up and make them a little bigger. Once again, I'm going to show you the settings for my Directing Pete's Battle Royale after this so you can see what it looks like on a much bigger map. But on a smaller map, you want to keep the move distance to 5, and you wanna actually move the big high-end distance down to even like 30 on a small map like this. You really don't want the circles bouncing around too much or shooting around the map. I hope this makes sense, but the only way you're really gonna understand it is by going between these two, adjusting them frequently until you feel a good flow for your map. All right, I know I'm super chatty today, but that's just because there's so much to talk about. All right, so we're going to the next beacon and on this one, we're gonna change it to phase two. And basically, we're gonna go down to end radius and just drop it down to 50. Now we have to decide, is the wait time and the resize time worth keeping the same? Now, for the wait time, you could go to 30 seconds if you'd like. That way it's only 30 seconds instead of a minute, but I still feel like um, we should keep some of these settings the same and we can move others. So I'm gonna move that wait time down to 30 because now our storm is shrinking. Uh, the resize time, I am going to keep at a minute, though. I'm going to keep that at a minute, and I'm going to keep damage at 2%. Everything else I'm going to keep, except now we're going to move down to the very bottom and look at our move maximum. And I'm going to actually change that to 20, because as the storm shrinks, we don't want the movement to be as uh, spastic or sporadic, if you will. All right, once again, we're gonna copy another storm beacon and we're gonna change it to phase three. Does this make sense? So each of these are a different phase of the storm. And then from 50, we're gonna to drop to 40. Uh, you may even wanna to go to 30, that's up to you. Wait time, I'm gonna keep it 30 right now. Now resize time, I'm gonna drop from one minute to 30 seconds and start to speed things up a bit. For damage, I'm actually gonna move it up to 5% now because I really want people to know that that storm is serious and that you can't be messing with the storm. <laughs> uh, everything else looks fine. You can actually keep the move distance maximum at 20 for this storm circle. Now for the next one, we're going to bring it down once again. We're going to bring now phase four down to end radius 30. Now, guys, do you notice a trend here? We're moving things down just a little bit at a time. Wait time, 15 seconds. Resize time. We're gonna keep it 30 seconds. Damage, we're gonna keep it five seconds. And now it may be an appropriate time to move the move distance max from 20 to 10. Um, and once again, that's because we're on a small map. So you wanna keep those, those uh, figures small. Now we're gonna to go to phase five. We're gonna go end radius down to 20 in this example. Our wait time, we're gonna drop down to 15 seconds. Our resize time, we're gonna leave the same damage we're going to leave the same and basically everything else we're going to leave the same this one's not going to change very much 
the biggest change was the end radius. All right, now for our final storm circle. I actually forgot to change the phase. That should be six there, guys. So change that to six. And then end radius down to zero. Wait time, 15 seconds. Resize time, I jacked back up to one minute. And the reason for that is you want that final circle to play out really crazy. Damage, 10%. Move distance, this may actually be too small, zero and five meters. You're gonna play around with those two to get a desired effect. With it being that small, it's almost every time gonna end up in the end circle right where you place the storm circles, and that may be boring for the people playing your map. So you may wanna experiment with widening, but these are very safe settings. These are your beginner starter settings, and then I want you to play with those bottom two for each phase as you go on. So let me go ahead and show you these phases really quick. All right, so just showing you each of these storm phases here, we're going to go through it pretty quick, but you're going to see here all the resizes and all the circles as they close. And this just gives you a quick idea of how these storm circles work based on the settings that we applied. So you'll see there, they're not really big changes. What I did for this very first advanced storm circle is I played it safe. I wanted to make sure that we didn't go overboard or we didn't do anything too crazy. All right, so continuing along, you're seeing here, we're getting these resize circles and they're relatively, you know, calm. They're all closing within each other, not going too crazy. And that's basically it, guys. That's the final one right there. And you can see this final one, if you remember correctly, we left this one at a full minute. And you'll see there, there's no final storm circle. That indicates that this is the final circle that's gonna go ahead and close on us and end the game. So. Guys, you will want to tweak these. Like I mentioned, these are very, very basic settings where you are going to just feel safe on your first version of this. And then what you're going to want to play with is the move distance minimum and maximum. That is the key to an amazing advanced storm circle. So you want to keep playing with those. Every map is different, so it's hard to make a video where it's going to work perfectly for your map. But the key and the secret is to work on those two settings once you have this basic template set up. All right, let me go ahead and show you in my Battle Royale map what I ended up doing for my settings. Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my Battle Royale map. I'll put the code there on the top of the screen and also in the description in below the video. So we're gonna go under the map here and you're gonna see the advanced storm circles that I set up for my big Battle Royale map. Now this map is huge. So the settings are gonna be a little bit different. I'm not gonna go through these each, we already explained them, but just go ahead and mimic these if your map is a lot bigger. If you wanna mimic these settings, you'll get the exact directing Pete Battle Royale formula. I'm giving it away to you guys right here. So go ahead and just mimic these settings. I'll play some fun music in the background while this plays. And uh, yeah, go ahead and enjoy. Oh, and not to beg, but if you guys have made it this far, and you haven't hit the like button, if you could do so, it helps the algorithm. And you know the rest, you know how this works. <laughs> I appreciate it so much, you have no idea. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope this was helpful. This was a very detailed video. There's a lot to cover here. 
Uh, thank you guys for stopping by. You can see how beautiful those storm rings are, and I know that your storm circles and your battle royale maps are probably looking better and better as you keep watching more videos and you keep learning all of this cool stuff. Guys, thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel, and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me make next. Until next time, take care.